This is an overview of the Rock Trauma Plans documentation, which includes the following. There's an Adobe PDF, a Microsoft Visio, and a Microsoft Excel documents. The PDF has the same content as the Visio document. A Google Drive link is provided in this video's comment section below where you can download these files. The Visio document was used to create the PDF file. I'm going to scroll through the PDF file so you can see what the content is. A Visio editor version 2003 or newer can open up this file. This will allow you to make changes to better meet your needs. The design goal focused primarily on developing a low-profile trauma for the purpose of separating dirt from river rocks while utilizing commodity parts. This document illustrates a majority of parts and assemblies while the following videos provide construction guidance. Also note that some miscellaneous parts like nuts, bolts, and washers are not documented. Looking at the trommel design, you'll notice that there's no indication of how the two befores are fastened together. All the lumber joints are fastened together using stainless steel deck screws. It's a number 10, 3 inches long. Here's an illustration. You'll notice that there's two deck screws per joint. One thing to keep in mind, in this location there are four wood screws. You have two here and two here. One thing to keep in mind is this screw and this screw can potentially hit each other. And when that happens, it is possible to actually twist the screw in two. One way to avoid this is to have this screw a little bit higher and place this screw a little bit lower so they miss each other. Another thing that is not illustrated on the trommel design are the brace bolts. You'll notice that on the 12 inch brace and 6 inch brace pages it'll identify that each brace will require two one and a quarter by a quarter inch leg screws. This is an illustration of a brace being mounted with leg screws. When mounting the pillow bearings I would recommend pre-drilling the holes. This will ensure that the 2 before does not split since this is a pretty weak point. And also you don't want to over torque your leg screws because it will strip, strip the hole out. This yellow component is illustrating the drive wheel. 
I selected this wheel because it's fairly soft and it gets a good grip onto the bicycle rim. I haven't had any problems with this wheel slipping during normal conditions. The only time I had an issue is when the trommel got wet. Once I dried off the trommel, then that took care of the slipping. One thing to note is the size of the keyway, which is a quarter inch. Compared to the keyed shaft, its keyway is 3 sixteenths by 3 thirty seconds. So what this means is that the key that comes with the drive wheel will not fit the shaft. So there's two options. The option I chose was simply to go with a 3 16 by 3 16 key which will fit loosely as we'll see here. Another option would be to have the original key machined so it would fit between the 3 16 and 3 30 seconds keyway as illustrated here. So we're taking this quarter inch by quarter inch and we would simply machine it so it would fit in the uh, 3 16 inch slot. And it would only have to be 3 30 seconds of depth which is illustrated here. And then I use a shaft collar to hold the wheel in place. So this is the uh, shaft collar. They come in a four pack, three quarter inch, and the outside dimension is, is an inch and a quarter. And it's nine sixteenths inch wide. So here's a view of the pillow bearing, drive wheel, and shaft collar. This trommel has two pulleys an axle pulley and a motor pulley. To calculate the belt length we look at the side view and we'll expose the two pulleys and the belt. So we can just look at the uh, geometry of it so this is nothing more than lines in circles. So up here is a better illustration. So we're trying to estimate and it uh, stands to reason that the belt in this situation is going to rest on the pulleys about half the distance of the circumference of the pulley. So for this pulley it is four inches times pi, which is 3.124, will equal a circumference of 12.56 inches. So it's 12.56 inches all the way around. So half of that distance is 6.28. So we repeat the process uh, for the 3 inch. We come up with uh, a travel distance of 4.71 inch. And then I draw a line between these two points that intersects the half of the pulleys. And you can just look on the Visio status bar and it'll tell you what the distance is. It's 6.374. So I just round it up to 3.7. And do the same way, thing for the bottom part, which is 6.47. So if you add up the distances around these two pulleys, it's approximately 23.83 inches, and that would be an outside diameter. So the outside of this belt is what we're uh, approximating. 
This particular belt is 24 inch uh, outside diameter. So I just rounded it up to 24 inches. So this is the motor pulley. You can see it's four inches diameter and it's about an inch and a quarter wide. So the bore diameter is actually the size of this hole here, which is 5 eighths inch. So that would fit the shaft of our motor, which has a 5 eighths inch shaft. The axle pulley is 3 inch diameter and it's uh, one and a quarter inch wide. So it is a three quarter inch bore, which is this diameter of this hole here. So this is the shaft that it's going to be uh, mounted to. Okay, this is a three quarter inch diameter shaft and it's called a keyed shaft because there's a keyway the full length of the shaft in this example. And the keyway is 3 16 So it's 3 16 across, and then it'll say by 3 30 seconds, which is just simply half of 3 16 So it's 3 30 seconds tall or deep. So when you get a 3 16 by 3 16 key, uh, the top 330 seconds of the key will actually uh, fit inside of the pulley. So that ensures that <clears throat> the pulley will uh, be securely fastened to the shaft to uh, ensure that the pulley is not going to slip freely on the shaft. So taking another look at the axle pulley you'll notice that the keyway size is 0.187 by 0.093. So 3 16 is the 0.1857. And then just half of that is your 3 30 seconds, which is your 0.093. To come up with the pulley size, first we needed to know how fast the motor shaft was spinning. So this is 87 RPM, so that's revolutions per minute, which implies that its shaft is rotating 87 times every minute. Next we need to know how fast we want our trommel to rotate. A typical trommel rotates every 30 revolutions per minute, so that'd be 30 RPM. Then we need to account for the items that uh, we will not change as, as far as dimensions, like the bike rim and the drive wheel. So what is left is the two pulleys. So these two pulleys are the ones that we can change the dimensions, which will affect how fast our trommel rotates. So the bike rim has a 22.5 inch outside diameter. And our drive wheel is a four inch in diameter. So what we're trying to account for is the outside diameter of this spike rim and how many revolutions it takes this drive wheel to actually rotate this bike rim one revolution. Okay, so next we need to determine what the ratio is 
for the axle pulley how many times we have to turn the motor pulley in order for this axle pulley to turn one revolution. So now we're going to use a spreadsheet uh, to help us come up with the best sizing of the motor and axle pulleys. So each one of these yellow cells are entry points that we would enter in our data. So we have our motor speed, which is 87 RPM. We have our motor pulley, which is 4 inches in diameter, and axle pulley, which is 3 inches in diameter, our drive wheel, which is 4 inches in diameter, and our trommel drum, which is 22.5 inches in diameter. And then our final calculation uh, will give us 20 RPMs is the trommel drum rotation speed. So typically trommels are operating around 30 RPMs. I was shooting for something a little bit slower, around 20 RPMs. And I um, sized the motor pulley and axle pulley to, to come up with 20 RPM uh, trommel drum rotation speeds. So how the spreadsheet works is we are taking our diameters and we're translating those into circumferences. So for every revolution, the motor pulley will, the outside diameter, will be 12.57 inches of distance traveled. And then the axle pulley, its circumference is 9.42 inches. So for every one rotation of the axle pulley is 9.42 inches of distance traveled. So if you divide uh, one pulley by the other pulley, like what we're doing down here is we're creating a ratio. So we're saying the motor pulley divided by the axle pulley. So you got two distances. And what you're trying to do is um, determine how many rotations uh, one pulley must make in order to achieve one rotation of the other pulley. And the same is true for the trommel drum and the drive wheel. So if, if both of these, let's say, are the same size, as an example, then it's, it's fairly easy to see that one rotation of one pulley is equal to the rotation of the other pulley. So your ratio is one. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, rotation. So you're, you're neither speeding things up or slowing them down. It's, it's one for one, going at the same speed. But uh, look what happens when we do that. Uh, our calculated speed actually drops in this example. If we had two four-inch pulleys, our speed would drop to 15.5 RPMs is our calculated uh, speed for the trommel drum. And it wouldn't matter if we had two two inches or if we had two ten inches. Since it's one to one, um, the speed of the trommel drum uh, will, will be the same for those sets of pulleys. Now that we have the ratios for the motor pulley, axle pulley, the drive wheel, trommel drum, we can calculate what a final ratio would be by multiplying these two ratios together. And with the final ratio, we can calculate what the trommel's drum rotation is by taking the final ratio times the motor speed. So the, the final entry here is simply identifying what I actually measured the trommel rotation to be. And I did that by videotaping the trommel I was, as it was running uh, for a full minute. And I simply counted how many rotations the trommel drum made during that one minute. And in this example, I counted around 23 revolutions in one minute. 
So this is telling us that our calculated value is pretty close to what the actual value is. The lumber trommel sheet is listing out the lumber. So this is your 2x4s and 2x6, as well as the aluminum angle iron pieces uh, to make the braces. So it's like a, a shopping list. Go to the lumber store. This is the dimensions, uh, like a, a two by four, 10 foot, I got a quantity of four of those. So it'll be 40 feet of, of a two by four. And a two by six, it looks like it just got one eight foot. And then for the aluminum angle iron, uh, looks like I got two six foots. And then down here is the leg screws. And a four foot by one foot, three quarter inch sheet of plywood. So once you've purchased the lumber, um, this tells you how to cut it. And I have two columns. One is the first cut, and then this is your second cut. So what that's implying is um, you want to cut all of your lumber to these dimensions. And then for these two items here, uh, once you've got everything put together, um, you would cut them down to the 18 inch lengths. And what that's referring to is this to before right here that mounts the wheel. So when you first create this to before, you're going to cut it to the full length, just like this one. So that makes it easier to work on, as illustrated here. So your first cut will be 26 inch. And then after you've assembled it and you're ready to put the wheel on, you can go ahead and cut it down to 18 inches, put your wheel on. And this will give you your five degree slope, as illustrated here. When you have two or more quantities for each item, it's identified with a letter. So there are two 11s. In this example, there's 11A and 11B, which accounts for the quantity of two for item 11, which is behind item five, which is made transparent, and you can do that here under fill. So with it selected, you can uh, turn off the transparency, then you can't see behind it. So 11 is behind 5, and that is right here. So this is a 11B and this is 11A. Here's another angle. So this would be 11A. This is 11B. And this piece here would be 5B. Another odd piece is this number 10. And here is 10 again. And 10 is uh, a 2 by 4 that's 5.25 5 inches long. So this would be 10. And this would be 10. Next we'll look at the three idle wheels. So 
So here's one, two, and three. And then we're using a threaded rod to secure the idle wheels to the two fours. So here's the idle wheels. And here's a nut in a washer. Idle wheel, nut and washer. And here's the two of four that it would be secured to. And the threaded rod is a 5 16 inch threaded rod. And you have 5 16 inch washer and nylon locking nut. And when you use a, a nylon locking nut, that will ensure that the nut will stay in place. And then I also use uh, plastic barriers close to the idle wheel to help prevent dirt from getting into the bearings of the wheel. And you, this is a better illustration how it uh, is hugging up close to the uh, bike rim. Just to recap from the build videos, um, how we used a, a fixture uh, to hold the two befores in a specific position. So when we drilled from the back side, we could always have the idle wheel hole in the same spot for all three two befores. And then we use the the nuts on both sides of the wheel to align the wheel perfectly with each bike rim. So if you have to move the wheel to the right, you would loosen this nut up and tighten this one up until you have the wheel perfectly centered with the bike rim. Also note that the drive wheel will only be in contact on one side of the bike rim. Then there's the shepherd's wheel. It's a 10 inch, inch and a quarter wide. Has little ball bearings in it. And then I use a uh, half inch, 36 inch long plated uh, steel shaft. And then uh, this is the end cap. So here's the illustration of the shepherd's wheel. And this is the hole in the two before. And here's the input side. You'd say here's the shaft. And then the final piece is the trommel drum itself. You'll notice on the uh, both sides is duct tape, as well as in the center. There's uh, on the inside. There's duct tape as well. And that's to help protect, uh, shield the idle wheels from the dirt. This is the dimensions of the bike rim. This is the measurements. And this is the spec I got uh, from where I purchased it from. This is the Illustration of the cable tie, which is here. So this is the ordering information. Um, it's nice to have extra ties just in case uh, you want to redo something. And then I used a galvanized hardware cloth. Uh, so it's uh, 48 inch 
and it's a 10 foot roll. So you want to place a tie strap around the hardware cloth for each spoke hole. And what you're trying to, to secure the bike rim to this particular strand of wire. And if you work on this strand of wire here, while having the rims in place on each of the idle wheels helps uh, make this trommel drum assembly to be nice and round. So you want to start off, I like to start off next to the inner tube hole which is like right here's the inner tube hole and just line them all up and then uh, use your tie strap and you want to start securing it and as you put in your next tie strap you want to keep moving your drum up so you're always working in this area here so I didn't use the full 10 feet of wire I would uh, cut it off so you can kind of see it right here where it's overlapping so this is how much I have um, for the overlap and then I'm just using a, a tie strap every look, right here I have three tie straps and then over here would be three more and that's pretty much how I finished it off um, with the splice this is a closer look at the duct tape so you can see there's two uh, strips of duct tape on the outside and one kind of overlaps the two on the inside and I just got it peeled back here so you can see what it looks like and then the final step is to apply uh, a water seal to the wood and this will help keep the wood from warping so this seemed to work pretty nice. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't take very much of this and it has no odor and it doesn't seem to uh, leave a stain so if you spill it this is clear so I had pretty good luck with this. One final note um, with respect to this uh, electric motor I went with a quarter horse and I was fortunate enough to find uh, this bison. It has a reduction gear on it, so I didn't have to worry about reducing a high-speed motor, which they're typically around 1,600 RPM down to 20 RPM. So I was fortunate enough to run across this at a pretty good price, and um, that's why I went with it. It, so everything worked out really nice. Um, I guess that's all I can think of. Uh, I wish you all the best at uh, building your own trommel. Thanks again for watching.